everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Tase Gonzalez Raya I'm from the University of the Basque Country. And today I'm going to talk to you about open air microwave entanglement distribution for quantum teleportation. So given that uh, most quantum communication protocols require the use of entangled resources between two or more parties in order to gain some kind of quantum advantage, we want to explore this, uh, this part of uh, existing quantum communication protocols and see how it would fare in open air settings. Especially we want to test this with microwaves. This presents a few challenges. The main one is the behavior of entanglement in open air in any given uh, dissipative environment. And also there's a challenge related to the existence of quantum repeaters and how entanglement distillation techniques would uh, pay out. And since I've mentioned we, we want to do this in microwaves, the state-of-the-art microwave technology presents or uh, up, to, up, to, up to recently presented some, some disadvantages. The key of microwaves is the low atmospheric attenuation of signals as compared to the optical regime. Also the lower energy scales, which is in some uh, cases will present some advantages. And also the... Um, the fact that microwaves are the natural talking frequency of superconducting circuits, which are the, one of the most stable and more used uh, quantum technologies. So the outline of the talk is going to be about entanglement distribution with microwaves in open air. We will see what entangled states in continuous variables are used, uh, how those states behave uh, after you combine the effects of an antenna that sends them to open air and attenuation in, in that environment. And we will see some entanglement survival distances. So the distances at which entanglement degrades in open air. Then we will try to uh, see some techniques for overcoming entanglement degradation. And we test the, st the states that we obtain in the typical case study for quantum communication, which is quantum teleportation. And this work is based on, on or this talk is based on a paper that uh, will appear in an archive maybe before the talk. We'll see. Um, so the continuous variable entangled states that are easily produced in microwaves are called two-mode squeeze states and they're generated from single-mode squeeze states that you can see there are states that have one of the quadratures squeezed below the, the level of vacuum fluctuations while the other one is, is extended in order to, I mean, the, the uncertainty relation has to be preserved, right? So these states are generated from two states that are single mode squeeze states with the squeezing in, in opposite directions of phase space, this one in X and this one in P. I don't know if you can see the labels. And they're combined in a balanced beam splitter. So the outcome states uh, are two mode squeeze states which are entangled states. Since the whole process is Gaussian preserving, we will describe them through the covariance matrix. This is the covariance matrix for a two mode squeeze thermal state. And the thermal part this N here assumes that the initial states, instead of being vacuum states, as I show here, they may be thermal state. Also, this number of photons uh, implies that there can be some other um, sources of noise coming from the JPAs, uh, which, I mean, there are some nonlinear effects, uh, some imprecisions in the pumping of the parametric amplifiers, but uh, mainly we can consider them as initial thermal states. Um, given that in microwaves at room temperature uh, for 5 gigahertz uh, frequencies the number of thermal photons is around 1200 uh, these states are normally generated in cryogenic temperatures so millikelvin temperatures right in order to reduce the effect of uh, thermal noise in the states which can um, degrade completely the quantum correlations but we want to study propagation in open air and these two are very different mediums with, with very different associated impedances or impedances associated to transmission of signals. So the antenna here, uh, which is based on this study that, that um, investigated a similar scenario as we want to, to see here, uh, the antenna is basically an, an inhomogeneous medium with a changing impedance that does an impedance matching program. Right? between the cryostat and the open air. And uh, essentially we see that the maximization of, um, of entanglement preservation coincides with the maximization of the classical uh, energy transmission for any classical antenna. So the result is uh, 
qualitatively the same. And, um, and the, the antenna can be described as a, a beam split with a thermal state input and with this, uh, this reflectivity that can be theoretically um, reduced below this, this value. Uh, then the next part is to study attenuation in open air, which we will do also with a beam split with a thermal input with this reflectivity with, uh, well, L is the distance as we consider that the state has traveled through open air, and mu is some kind of reflectivity density, right? Because we consider uh, the possibility of individual uh, absorption, photon absorption events happening at very, uh, yeah, in very small steps through the, through the path. So the combination of the, the, those two beam splitters leads to uh, total reflectivity that would characterize uh, photon losses and, and thermalization of the state and affects the covariance matrix in this way. This process is also Gaussian preserving. And here we're assuming that we have one of the modes. Um, as you see, this mode uh, is kept inside the cryostat and this one is sent through open air and is mixed with the thermal environment. And this is how the correlations, the off-diagonal elements, are the, how the correlations degrade because of this of this interaction. Uh, this kind of state uh, corresponds to the asymmetric scenario that we consider in which if we are connecting two parties, uh, consider that Alice generates the states, keeps one of the modes and send the other, sends the other one to Bob and now they share an entangled state. But we also consider the symmetric scenario in which an intermediate party generates the states and sends both of the modes. In this case, one of the modes travel a distance L, and in this case, we want to reduce that distance, but now both modes are degraded by, by the environment. And we compute the, for a, what we believe is a realistic scenario, we compute the distances at which the entanglement is lost. And we do that using the partial transposition as a, an entanglement witness, and the negativity as the, as the quantifier. So, in order to try to improve these results, we resort to entanglement distillation, which is a technique that aims at increasing entanglement in a given uh, quantum state by means of local operations and classical communication. We focus on photon subtraction, which is, given this uh, diagram, is directly, um, directly taken from an optical setup into a microwave one uh, and attempts with a single copy of a given state, attempts to, to increase its entanglement by, mean of, by means of applying uh, annihilation operators, which in a realistic setting, well, this would be the theoretical one, this is the probabilistic one, would be more experimental one. Um, it takes into account uh, high transmittivity beam splitters with ancillary vacuum states, and then photo counting, right? So, uh, in this case, we consider that we will keep the resulting state after one photon has been detected in each of the, of the beam splitters, right? So effectively, in each mode of the, of the two-mode state, one photon has been subtracted. Um, general, we, we have considered this, this uh, protocol because other uh, entanglement distillation protocols require all many copies of the state. They are not deterministic. And I think most of them are, are non-Gaussian, so they are not not quite efficient, not quite favorable in, in any case. Uh, another another uh, protocol that we could consider is called entanglement swapping. It's Gaussian preserving and it attempts to um, connect, in this case, Alice and Bob, right? Uh, we assume that we have Alice and Charlie share a bipartite entangled state and Charlie and Bob share another one. So Charlie can make Gaussian, in this case, OMA in detection, which are Gaussian measurements. On, his, on the two modes that he holds, and then an entangled state between Alice and Bob is generated. Since this is Gaussian preserving, the entanglement of the outcome state cannot be, or the, the, the state that you get at the end cannot be, or cannot show higher entanglement than the, the previous state, but we will try to do this in order to um, overcome the effects of, of entanglement degradation, right? So the idea is to reduce the distance that the states have to travel through, through open air. And we will test these states in quantum teleportation, which with continuous variable is, looks something like this. Um, we assume that Alice has some unknown state, we will think at a coherent state, and what she does is combine it with 
the mode of the entangled state that she shares with Bob and perform homodyne measurements. The results of those measurements are communicated classically to Bob, who then applies a displacement based on those measurement results on the, on the mode that he holds from the, from the entangled state. And if you have a, a Gaussian pure unknown state and a Gaussian resource, you can compute the average fidelity after you average over measurement results. You can compute it in, in that way. Uh, in this case, we'll, what we will show is the results for photon subtraction and entanglement swapping compared to the to not doing any any entanglement distillation or swapping, right? So the green line, which is zero, represents the two-mode squeezed thermal state that has traveled through open air, um, and we sorry we're representing fidelity as well, fidelity average fidelity differences versus the distance that the state have, have traveled. So we represent photon subtractions as solid lines, the heuristic or theoretical photon subtraction, and it, as dashed lines, the, the more uh, experimental one, no, the one that's closer to reality. And in this orange line, we represent entanglement swapping. See that, of course, theoretical photon subtraction works better than the, than the probabilistic one, but they still, both of them show some kind of advantage initially. Um, and they lose the advantage with respect to the bare state without doing anything for, you know, 100 meters, something like that. It's when the entanglement of the um, entanglement advantage given by photon subtraction is, is lost, right? And entanglement swapping, we see that once the, the state is, or the fidelities are very low, and the state is, uh, has entanglement that's been really degraded by, by the environment, then it can show an advantage, but it will be sh uh, showing an advantage when the fidelities are quite low. And here, the region that we show in, in red is the, the maximum classical fidelity, is when the, the quantum advantage has been, has been lost. Um, so to sum up this thing, we have seen the, the states that are used and produced in microwaves, uh, the entangled states that are used as resources in microwaves, which are two-mode squeezed thermal state. We have seen the effects of the antenna and the environment. Uh, we have estimated the distances that the entanglement can survive in open air. And we have tested those states with photon subtraction and entanglement swapping adapted to uh, microwave technologies. And we studied them for, for uh, quantum teleportation protocol. And if I have some time, I would like to say that this work is, has been done within the QMIX project of the European Quantum Flagship Initiative. And these are the, the authors of the corresponding work. So uh, Mateo and Yasser from Lisboa, uh, Florian, Michael, Kirill and Frank from Walter Meissner in Germany, Miko from Alto in, in Finland, and we have Vahid and Mikkel from University of the Basque Country. So thank you very much.